So for the past few years, I've gotten to see the students return from this field school. And for me, I, it's always been something that I've wanted to do. And, and over time, you, you generate these incredible expectations of what that field school is going to provide. And one of those things is your knowledge of design. Um, you expect to, to enter, these, enter these rooms or studios with these designers and come out with this profound knowledge or this, this enhancement of your voice of what maybe what design is or some type of uh, competence that you didn't have before. Um, and now that I think about it, that wasn't a good way of looking at it. Um, now I really think you have to you have to be working, you have to do a project, or you have to do something to be able to apply that knowledge or be able to spark an idea that came from one of those interviews. I think I have felt that my knowledge of design has been uh, enhanced, you could say, or pushed forward um, because of those experiences, not just the interviews, but the, the cultural experiences as well. And being able to maybe work, work at a higher level, an ability to push myself harder than I ever have. And uh, I think these things can set myself apart maybe from other designers, or at least I have a better understanding of who I am and, and what I can do and what I, what I want to do. Within SEAT or within the North American context, a lot of these designers we do talk to may not be as relevant um, to what we want to work in or where we want to be in, in five years. Um, they might be an industrial designer, they might be architects or these, these you know, various different fields, um, but there's definitely still things you can take from that. Um, but funny enough, I think the one I most identify with at this current time as I reflect on it um, is dot, dot, dot. But I think what I respected most was that there was these four young creative people that were just taking risks, doing different things um, similar to OFL and it, it just seemed fun. You know, it almost seemed like a, a class with Russell that I'd taken in 338 where, you know, if, if someone said, well, why don't, why don't we try this, the craziest idea in the world, why don't we just try it? You know, and they're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, like I, I think I identify with that ability to, to really going for it and, and taking risks. Um, otherwise, uh, I feel like there wouldn't be, sure, there would be a, a challenge in another respect, but, you know, the ability to do something that maybe hasn't been done or something that's different or something that has meaning, uh, more meaning than what had been done previously. So I definitely respected that with dot, dot, dot. I remember hearing Russell, our, our prof, saying in 233, don't design for yourself. And when I thought about it at the time, I didn't really understand what that meant. Does that mean I can't design for, you know, if, if I was interested in something? Or does that mean I can't design uh, a guitar because I'm into music? Is that what that means? And I think it took me a long time to understand that for myself. And what, what I finally got to was, it, it wasn't that you couldn't do those things or that example, it was that if you were to do that, so the example right now is I'm working with a friend on a fitness uh, software application. Um, and I'm familiar with the athletic scene, but I'm not designing it for myself. I'm not designing it the way that I want it. I'm designing it, or we are designing it, for that community of athletes or that culture. And those are the people that we think about while we're making this app or while we're thinking about the interaction or the information model or all these various different things that come into it. So at the end of the day, designing for this community and, and not thinking about just your, yourself. Sure, your intuition helps, but the, that does not drive your design decisions at all. It's really about thinking about that culture, those people, how they are going to use that object, that space, that application, that software. Um, so I think today that is my view and that's what I'm going to move forward um, thinking of. Um, but, you know, as Chepi, as Giulio Chepi said was, you know, this, this changes all the time. You're constantly reflecting what design is. Um, or, you know, if someone can answer that question, you know, I should really talk to that person. But, you know, I think it's really about, and Carlotta says this too, is sitting down and reflecting, you know, at least once a year, I mean, preferably maybe once a month saying, what is design? Or, you know, what is my vision? What is my dream? 
I think if you don't do that, you're really not being honest with yourself and you're really, you're really, you know, why are you doing, why are you into design or why are you doing what you do? What meaning does it have? What purpose does it have? Um, so I think at that current time, that's my view and I don't doubt that that'll change uh, maybe next month, next year, who knows.